throughout the Dark Aether story that we have experienced over these last few Call of Duty titles, we have only gotten the chance to explore the eponymous realm a few fleeting times. Now, in Season 1 of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, we have once again broken through the veil of reality to reach this dark reflection of our world. With this new dimension comes new missions to do and rewards to get, but to get there, players will need to complete several quests and easter eggs. These include a fully fledged boss fight and collecting items that some players might struggle with. Hi, I'm Toast and today we will show you how to complete the Dark Aether Rift easter egg and gain access to the Dark Aether in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. How to complete Bad Signal and beat Gormgant. To access the Dark Aether, you will first need to do every mission up through Act 3. This goes all the way up to the Defeat Zakhev mission, which includes the Orcus boss fight. Once you overcome the Aether Worm, you will gain access to Act 4 and the mission known as Bad Signal. Head to Sector F6 and you will find a Dark Aether Portal along the coast just outside of the High Threat Zone. With the Act 4 mission active, get yourself ready for a massive fight in the Dark Aether. I suggest bringing in any weapon with a large magazine such as an LMG and get it all the way up to Pack-a-Punch level 3. For perks, you should definitely have Juggernog, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, Quick Revive, Deadshot Daiquiri and Tombstone Soda. Make sure you come in with a 3 plate armor vest and Frenzied Guard to get some armor back if you run out while you fight through the Dark Aether. We also suggest having multiple self revive kits because the boss fight at the end of the mission can quickly take you out. If you are able to track down one or two deadbolt turret circuits, make sure you take them with you since there is a chance that a turret can spawn near the boss fight arena. It's not a great idea to take a bunch of these circuits since you aren't guaranteed to even have a turret and really you should definitely prioritize having more self revive kits, but having a few if you have the extra space certainly won't hurt. Feel free to team up with other players if you find yourself needing help, but this is a mission that can be completed solo, it's just a little bit harder. Once you interact with the Dark Aether portal, you will need to open up your TAC map and confirm that you want to travel to the Dark Aether. When most of your team, or just you if you're going solo, press yes, you will be teleported to the Dark Aether. Once here, you will be tasked with activating four obelisks at these locations on the map, each one having one of the ammo mod icons carved into them. Once activating these seals, you will need to feed them by collecting zombie souls by killing them near the obelisk. Once you fill the bar on the left side of your screen, the seal will explode, revealing a quest item that we will track down later on in this easter egg. These items include a dog collar, a pill bottle, a surveillance camera and a locked diary. Once you break all the seals, you will be told to make your way out of the dark ether. Head to the south part of the map to find a portal similar to the one you used to enter the area. As you get close, however, an ether worm known as Gormgant emerges from the ground and is ready to turn you into its lunch. Just like Orcus from the end of Act 3, you will need to target the glowing purple areas of the creature's body while avoiding his attacks. His moveset includes launching out four orbs that will track you and do damage when they hit you, quickly eating away at your armor. The best way to deal with this move is to watch for when the orbs are launched, which you will see when Gormgant roars. You can see the orbs fly through the sky in the direction the worm is facing. There is a very small window of time before the orbs start to track you. 
So get behind Gormgand and then turn back to face the orbs and shoot all of them when they are far away to stop them from even getting close to you. When Gormgand pulls back its head, run toward the worm and avoid its head smash. Also, the boss will shoot a laser into the ground before swiping it up towards you. Once you see the laser, turn to the left or to the right and then quickly sprint to avoid the beam. Finally, Gormgand can burrow beneath the ground and then launch you into the air, devouring you. You will need to mash the parachute button as this is the only chance to survive this move. Once the worm spits you out, you will pull the chute and make your way back to the ground. If you get hit by the head of Gormgand during its slam attack, it will eat you as well, which will require you to perform the exact same parachute spamming technique. With all of this explained, the best way to defeat this boss is to keep circling the giant worm and keep dumping damage into its weak points. Just keep an eye on Gormgant and take out the orbs while avoiding its more direct attacks and pouring on damage whenever you have an opening. If you find yourself low on armor, use your frenzied guard or look in these ether crystals around the area as they have a chance of dropping armor when broken. If you are low on ammo, use the ammo supply found right on the beach. Keep fighting, avoiding attacks and doing damage and you should be able to take down this boss, which again will be made easier if you have some teammates tagging along with you. Once Gormgant is finally defeated, open the reward rift that spawns, collect the locked diary and exfil from the dark ether. Bad signal is now complete, but this easter egg is just getting started. Collect the pedestal quest items. Now that you have the locked diary, you will need to collect the other three items you saw at the obelisks in the dark ether and bring them to the pedestals at the center of the ether tornado found on a small island in sector F5. Placing all of these items on the correct pedestals will open the dark ether rift, which will allow you to re-enter the place below creation where you can complete end game content with unique and powerful rewards. These quest items can be found in Urzikstan by performing certain easter eggs and can be done in any order. But each one will take you to one of the different threat zones, so we will go through the list of items by starting in the low threat zone and then making our way up to the high threat zone. While you can bring the locked diary into your game while you try and get these other items, I suggest unequipping it and leaving your match to re-equip the diary after you get the other items just so you don't accidentally end up losing the diary and be forced to fight Gormgant all over again. To find the pill bottle, you will need to get the Brain Rot ammo mod and head to either an infested nest or an infested stronghold. With your Brain Rot equipped weapon, shoot one of the cysts but don't destroy it. The cyst will then change colour and you will be able to interact with it. Once you complete interacting with the cyst, it will burst and allow you to pick up the pill bottle from the destroyed cyst. When you pick up the bottle or any of the other quest items going forward, you will notice it is purple instead of gold like the locked diary. You will need to upgrade the item to gold tier before you can use it on one of the pedestals to open your gateway to the dark ether. To upgrade the quest item, find an ether tear. This will launch you into the air and if you have one of the quest items, will allow you to parachute into another tear that will begin the upgrade process. With the pill bottle, go through the green rift while in the air and you will teleport above the hotel in Galia Seaside in Sector C5 of the Low Threat Zone along with a purple bounty contract. Pick up the new contract and hunt down your target. You will come across the HVT along with other elite enemies which you will need to defeat to get the reward rift. Inside of this rift is the upgraded pill bottle. Next up is the surveillance camera which requires you to find an ether orb and have the dead wire ammo mod. When you shoot the ether orb with dead wire, it will turn gold. Destroy the gold orb and it will drop the surveillance camera. Repeat the process of going through an ether tear and then float through the orange tear in the sky to spawn above sector F7 with another purple bounty contract, this time in the medium threat zone. 
Once again, you will find a gold version of the camera in the reward rift that spawns when the HVT is eliminated. Finally, you can get the dog collar by putting a chunk of flesh and either a Molotov cocktail or thermite into a doghouse found across the map. Here is where you can find dog houses across Uzbekistan. Putting these items into the doghouse will spawn an enemy hellhound. Defeat it and it will drop the collar. Repeat the process with the ether rift one last time and go through the floating red rift. You will arrive in the high threat zone above a building in sector F4. Defeat the HVT from the third and final purple bounty contract to get the golden dog collar. If you didn't bring the lock diary, exfil and load into another match with all four quest items. You are now ready to open the dark ether rift. How to open the dark ether rift. With all the gold quest items now acquired, head to the dark ether rift icon in sector F5 and go into the dark ether tornado. You will need to place each of the quest items onto the pedestal that has the same ammo mod icon that the item came from in the dark ether. This means the dog collar will go with napalm blast. The surveillance camera will be on the dead wire pedestal. The pill bottle will be on the pedestal with the brain rot icon. And finally, the locked diary will be on crypto freeze. Once all the items are placed, a large dark ether portal will appear and an HVT mega abomination will spawn in. So make sure you are ready for a fight with something like a juggernaut suit before you do this step. When the three headed monster is defeated, you will find a new item known as the sigil in the reward rift and the dark ether portal will now be open. This means that this dark ether rift will now appear in every single future game you load into and you won't need to get all of these quest items ever again. You can approach the side of the portal and you will be prompted to use a sigil to open the portal and travel to the dark ether. You will need to use a sigil to go to the dark ether and these can now appear in reward rifts after completing contracts in the high threat zone. Just like the portal that led to the bad signal mission, you and your team, if you're with any other players, will need to press yes on your tag map after using the sigil to cross the interdimensional veil. Dark Ether Contracts and Schematic Rewards Once in the Dark Ether, you will be tasked with completing three contracts. These are found in the form of three Mr. Peak dolls that spawn in the same location every single match. One Mr. Peaks is found on the left side of the map on the roof of this building and will always be an Ether Extractor contract. Luckily, no mercenaries will spawn, so you will just need to take out the zombies and interact with the extractors to finish this mission. The doll found near the center of the map will lead you to an escort mission, which will require a lot of focus if you want to make sure the ACV makes it all the way through its path as the undead horde and numerous elite enemies try to stop you. Finally, there is a Mr. Peaks found in a bus overlooking the beach where you fought Gormgant. This is the Outlast contract which tasks you with surviving in the interior of Al Bagra Fortress just above the Packer Punch Machine. These contracts can reward you with new high-end rewards such as golden armor vests, dog bones and ether blades as well as schematics for all of these items. You can also find Elder Sigils which can be used to load into even more difficult versions of the Dark Aether. Completing all the contracts in a single match will also unlock the Geode Weapon Blueprint for the MCW Assault Rifle. Once all the contracts are completed and your rewards are collected, you can find Dark Aether portals like the ones we've used before to exfil from the area, instantly ending your match with all of your new loot from this dark and twisted realm. With this just being the start of our exploration of the Dark Aether and with more content coming to Modern Warfare 3, what more does this area have in store? And with that, you now know how to get to the Dark Aether in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Have you been able to brave the unknown horrors of the place below creation? Let us know in the comments down below and let us know what other guides and easter eggs you want us to cover. And of course, make sure to subscribe to get notified of more videos in the future.